People, planet, peace. That is Dr. Jill Stein's campaign slogan. She is throwing her hat in the 2024 presidential ring, announcing a Green Party candidacy yesterday, citing a broken two-party system. Watch. The political system is broken. The two Wall Street parties are bought and paid for. Over 60% of us now say the bipartisan establishments failed us, and we need a party that serves the people. I'm Jill Stein, and I'm running for president to offer that choice for the people outside of the failed two-party system. We'll put solutions to the crises we face, crushing inequality, endless war, and climate collapse, and we'll put these front and center in this election and on the ballot across the country. The twice Green Party presidential nominee was recruited to help build Cornell West's third party run earlier in the summer, but is now running as an independent. Stein ran in 2012 and most recently in 2016, angering Democrats who said she siphoned off votes from Hillary Clinton in close swing states, including Michigan, Wisconsin and Pennsylvania leading to Donald Trump's ultimate victory. She will likely draw ire again, especially since Biden is polling in those battleground states within a few percentage points from Donald Trump. Polling earlier this week revealed how insurgent candidates, RFK Jr. and West, are throwing a wrench in the works, with the former ranking in as high as 24% in some key states. Per New York Times Siena College poll, it remains to be seen how Dr. Stein will impact these numbers. So a lot of folks are calling Jill Stein a spoiler candidate. They always have. Howie Hawkins also running most recently with the Green Party. It sounds like this is going to be a crowded field no matter what. RFK Jr. in the race, Cornell West in the race. We still have Marion Williamson with the Democratic Party. It sounds like this is going to be crowded no matter what. We can't really blame Jill Stein for taking votes away from Hillary Clinton when they feel like Hillary Clinton doesn't represent their political interests. They're not owed the votes of anyone uh, who is to the left of Donald Trump. That's not how the political process works. So I think more voices are generally good. I think it's good for democracy. Yeah, I, I don't buy the idea that Jill Stein cost Hillary Clinton the election in 2016. Um, people make that argument by saying in Pennsylvania in particular, if just half of Jill Stein's voters had flipped to Hillary Clinton, then she would have won that state because she only lost by about a percentage point. But I think the idea that all of Jill Stein's voters or even half would have voted for Hillary if she weren't in the race is an act of great conceit and arrogance. Um, Jill Stein has a fundamentally different voting base than the Democratic establishment, including Joe Biden, including Hillary Clinton. I think it's fair to say that a lot of the people who went out and voted for her probably wouldn't have voted at all and possibly could have even voted for Donald Trump. So it's not as simple as saying all of Jill Stein's voters came from Hillary Clinton. And I think it's fair to take the same tack in 2024 in regards to Joe Biden. And at this point as well, when you have RFK Jr. also running as an independent, there's a debate over who he would take more voters from. And I think popular consensus has recently come to the conclusion that he would take more votes from Donald Trump. So it kind of ends up being a wash. If you have RFK Jr. polling at 20 to 24 percent as an independent candidate, Jill Stein job, jumping into the race, potentially taking votes from Joe Biden. Between those two, it should be pretty even in terms of Trump and Biden losing to the independents. Yeah, when we consider the vast majority of voting age Americans that don't participate in elections, it becomes obvious that there's a lane for third party candidates, independent candidates running every election cycle. It's very obvious that Donald Trump and Joe Biden aren't extremely popular with their very high unfavorability ratings uh, and a small faction of very you know, devout supporters. A lot of these are mainline Democrats on, on our side. And Donald Trump has ignited his own base of the Republican Party. But I think when we consider the plurality of votes needed, it's not going to work if we have Jill Stein and Cornell West 
and Marion Williamson perhaps running separately, I really think what we'll eventually see is they gain their own bases throughout the campaigning and then eventually run together. I think that would make the most sense considering these candidates represent a lot of the same ideas. But these are ideas that neither Biden nor Trump represents. And so they're not pulling any votes away. If anything, they're igniting a base of voting age people who never show up or people who wouldn't have been excited enough to cast a ballot ultimately in 2024. I think you're absolutely right about that. That strategy you're alluding to as well of these independent or third party candidates pulling their resources together, pulling their bases together is a similar conversation to what's happening on the Republican side in terms of the challengers to Donald Trump. There's uh, some popular uh, commentary around the idea that the remaining Republican primary candidates that aren't Trump should choose one candidate to coalesce around, the rest should drop out, because that would give that one person a better chance of beating Trump in the early primary states, particularly in Iowa. It's sort of the Ted Cruz strategy from 2016, but done a little bit earlier in a way that it could potentially be more effective. But I don't buy that just one person, regardless of who it is, in terms of the current primary challengers, would be able to take out Trump anyway. I also wanted to bring up that New York Times poll we saw last week in terms of Joe Biden's uh, potential to lose in about five out of seven major battleground states. That's a big deal. And I don't think the proper answer to that is for the Democratic Party to shut out potential challengers to Biden as if he's going to magically become more popular or magically appeal more to the working class Americans who mostly reside in those states and are really revved up to vote in 2024. I think the proper answer is actually to tell Biden to step aside. And to their credit, there have been some Democratic strategists who have done that. Bill Kristol has called for Biden to step aside. David David Axelrod in an X thread last week suggested that if Biden were to continue his reelection campaign, it would only be for his own personal benefit as opposed to the benefit of the country. And you're going to see, I think, more people come out like that as these polls continue to drop and continue to show that Biden is not performing well. And even on some of these singular issues, Trump outpaces Biden by about 20 percentage points on who people trust to lead the economy more. People trust Trump more on foreign policy and pretty much every other uh, top five issue for voters. So to turn their attention on attacking people like Jill Stein and RFK and Cornell West, I think really misses the point, which is that it's Biden and his policies that are unpopular. And you have to fix that problem rather than just eliminating potential competition. Yeah, Joe Biden really relied on young voters and voters of color in 2020. And he's lost support among young voters and voters of color. When you look at the Arab American vote and how that's just disintegrated since Biden came into office, he had almost 60 percent of the Arab American vote helped him deliver Michigan. And now it's pulling at around 17 percent, whether or not Arab Americans will vote for Joe Biden, 17 percent saying they still support Joe Biden. That's a huge drop. But let's also reflect on the fact that voters from 18 to 24 overwhelmingly want a ceasefire. Joe Biden was asked by reporters just yesterday if there will be a ceasefire in Gaza. And he said, no, none, absolutely not. He's going to lose a lot of young voters. A lot of people have pointed to his failure to deliver on his promise for student loan debt forgiveness or cancellation, and he hasn't done that. But I think really what we need to look at is what's going on in Gaza. This has ignited a lot of young people who haven't even been really a part of politics uh, in this way before. A lot of these voters are so young that they weren't really politically activated during the Iraq war. And this is their first entry point into political activism. And they're on the opposite side of Joe Biden. So this young vote he really relied on, he's finding himself on the opposing side of a pretty divided conflict. And I think that's really going to hurt him. Similarly, Hillary Clinton had her own policy failures and her own personal failures in calling a huge proportion of the electorate, everyday working class people calling them deplorables. And so when you have all these Democratic consultants blaming people like Jill Stein, independent candidates as as spoilers for their elections, instead of reflecting on their own policy failures and personal failures, it's really just an excuse. The candidate came short of representing the needs and wants of the American people. And that's what it is at the end of the day, an excuse if you're going to blame Jill Stein's and Cornell West's. 
To your point about Biden losing his base of young and uh, co uh, people of color voters, the New York Times Siena poll found that Biden only leads in voters under 30 against Trump by about one percentage point, and Trump uh, got about 22 percent of black voters in that poll. The gap with Hispanic voters had fallen dramatically as well. And those are all really bad signs if you're a Democratic candidate, because I doubt that Biden can make up for that loss in white working class voters who went for Trump pretty hard in 2016 and 2020. So I think you're right. They have a lot of soul searching to do. We'll be back with more Rising after this.